you see that there are two dots, you know, the opposite to each other. That is the light source. Yeah. Okay, that is the fiber optic bundle I'm talking mm -hmm. about. Okay, this one is your camera. iPhone radio camera. Uh, camera chip. Video camera. Yeah. Okay, and this is the working channel. Okay, and the chip is right here. It goes through here, goes through the system, and then it gives you a view here. So this is a flexible bronchoscope. This is not a flexible fiber optic bronchoscope. But there are fiber optics to deliver the light into the vacuum. So if you write something, if you communicate with somebody, this is a flexible scope. This is not a flexible fiber optic bronchoscope, which was completely not only this part, and this part was all fiber optics. But before you use electrocautery, look at it that it's not a metallic tip. If it's a metallic tip, it is not electropotry compatible. In this particular scope, not only that the tip is ceramic, the entire scope, all the metallic parts are insulated so that you don't get a current. By natural rubber, yeah. and this is polyurethane, okay? So this is, yes, it is not, this is stretchable. This stretches, it's a rubber, just yeah. like your rubber band. Mm -hmm. Well, this is not that kind of substance, okay? So that is the difference. So what, what does that mean to you? That you do not use, remember just now, AB sprayed this bronch, but you be careful that what you spray is not petroleum-based jelly. Rubber and petroleum does not go along together to the crack. Am I making sense? Mm -hmm. So the only thing you put on this is water soluble gel. This is your suction port. Mm -hmm. That this is the suction is attached to the suction tubing right here. Mm -hmm. And when you squeeze this thing, you know, when you push it down, that is your suction. This is an instrument channel, instrument port. Channel is only one instrument port, suction port, okay? Why did they do this, sir? Good morning. Good morning, sir. When, when we were learning the bronch, I'm talking about in 70s and 80s, we had only one port. Same thing we used for suction, same thing we used for putting the instrument in. But then they had to change it, and only reason to change it was, you won't believe what, what made it a change, it was AIDS era. Every other bronc in the 80s I was doing was an AIDS patient. Mm -hmm. Every other bronc I used to do, I used to die was pneumocystis carinia and pneumonia. Those days, there was no video chip in the, in the bronchoscope. We used to look like, you know, see the eyepiece. Okay. Oh, wow. So imagine that there is a PCP in the patient. I'm looking through this, and patient is coughing, and the channel, the okay. secretions will go into my eyes. Therefore, they made these two channels separately, that you put the instruments here, the suction channel is closed. That was the concept, but now we are on the video cameras, so it doesn't mean very, very much. But that was the, I, that's the reason they came up with two separate ports mm -hmm. for this instrument. The scope has got three movements, in and out. Anybody can do it, no big deal. Another one is using your thumb, up and down, 180 degrees, bends in, you know, front, and about 140 degrees, bends, retroflexion, okay? Am I making sense? Yeah. The most important movement, however, which we refer to as bronchoscopy is a wrist procedure. If you look at the GI scope, which has got not only up and down, but it has got another knob here, which takes the bronchoscope right and left. To have that particular movement, they have to add two more wires to the body of the scope. There is not enough room for that particular mechanism, and hence, you have to use your wrist as a second knob, which you see in the endoscope. Flexion and extension of the wrist. That's what you do. That's how you do the bronchoscopy. In and out, up and down, and flexion and extension of the wrist. And if you use this movement, you'll be a good bronchoscopist. 
bronchoscopy is not a shoulder procedure. You will see some fellow struggling with their shoulder. That's, you can tell that he or she is not a good, good bronchoscopy because they are using their shoulder. Bronchoscopy is not an elbow procedure. Bronchoscopy is not a leg procedure. You will see people struggling and they are trying to get in different parts. And just do all the three movements. But what I want you to remember, bronchoscopy is a risk procedure. Okay? Another very important thing. Bronch if you don't use your wrist, then you try to do rotation of the scope. It is not a screwdriver. Okay. People hold this thing so tight and try like a screwdriver. You break the instrument. Bronchoscope once again should be held right here to be very comfortable so that you have a nice view. Okay? If you're a short bronchoscopist like myself, you always have a step stool. Don't feel shy of using a step stool. But don't hold the bronchoscope like that. You'll see some people holding the bronchoscope like that, like this, and trying to look at the monitor through their arms. That's right. Just take a step stool. Another very important reason to use a step stool. This is the most vulnerable portion of the bronch. Okay? If you are a short bronchoscopist and then you try to do the bronchoscopy, what you're going to do is bend this part and it will Okay? This is almost, this, this instrument is more expensive than your car. Good. Shigeto Ikeda. He was a thoracic surgeon at, at Tokyo University. Okay? He designed the bronchoscope. He was left-handed. His dominant hand was the left hand, so he designed it in left hand. So, because he is holding it in left hand, I will start on my, my dominant hand, okay? That was fine. But if you go back and look at Shigeto Ikeda's old pictures performing the bronchoscopy, those days, bronchoscopy was one hand procedure. That he would hold the bronchoscope in one hand. There was a lock here that you bend the scope right here and then put the lock on. So now the scope is in the apical segment. He, loses, he, he releases his hand now, but the scope is in the same position. He takes lidocaine, he squirts lidocaine, he takes the brush, he is doing that, okay? Because bron bronchoscope was a one-hand procedure then. He did everything. I have changed that term. Bronchoscopy is a three-hand procedure. You never do bronchoscopy without a good assistant, okay? So all those things you don't need to do anymore, okay? However, let me t cut the chase and tell you, bronchoscope should today be held in the left hand. I'm holding it in the wrong hand. The reason for that is very simple. Is bronchoscopy is a three-hand procedure. Jordy is there or Steve is there always or Michael is there always with me. They are my dominant hand. 